Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Please allow me to give an account of a talk devoted to the revision surgery in oncology patients. Uh, revision of total joint replacement. I would like to say that uh, total joint replacement is one of the methods of choice when we speak about malignancies of bones. Introduction of new methods and uh, more re resilient uh, materials allow us to uh, broaden the indications for organ sparing surgeries and uh, receive good oncological and functional outcomes. In the more than 80% of cases, primary metastatic lesions of the bones and the contemporary complex or comprehensive approach, we can stick to the organ sparing uh, surgeries and uh, also we can but uh, the uh, rate of revision interventions varies from 5 to 50 percent by the data of different publications. The uh, biggest or the most frequent reason for such revision surgeries is aseptical instability uh, and uh, also uh, periprosthesis uh, infections or uh, also fractures of bones to which the, uh, uh, the prosthesis is fixed, then mechanic fractures of the uh, prosthesis as well as the um, wear of the uh, parts and the, of, um, parts of the, the prosthesis as well as the local relapse of uh, the main disease. Uh, 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 with exploitation, the uh, revision surgery rate will uh, go up related to the aseptic, lo aseptic loosening or infection rate. Despite the methods of surgery, the rate of post-operative complications is rather high. So the development of complications after a total replacement would depend on the age of the patient, the length of the uh, resection, also uh, type of fixation, type of endoprosthesis, the quality of bone tissue, as well as the immune status of the patient. The strategy of primary total replacement is standardized, but the revision methods are just unforeseen. Uh, they cannot be uh, uh, prognosed, and it requires high skill and uh, experience from a surgeon. And uh, revision surgery are associated with bigger complication rates if compared to the primary uh, total replacement. And also, uh, the, this complexity can be explained by uh, problems from the adjacent soft tissue as well as the uh, comorbidities. In my center, we performed 341 total replacement in patients because of primary and secondary lesions of this uh, skeletal muscular system. The majority of this Revisions were done in patients with lesions in the, seg uh, in the distal segment of the uh, bone. You can see that uh, uh, it accounted for almost 17 uh, percent. 27 surgeries in the distal uh, hip, which accounted for 46 and 20 percent from all the total replacements. 16 surgeries in the proximal uh, tibial bone, that's 27%. The booth must apologize, I'm all, I al almost ca cannot hear the speaker. Eight uh, surgeries in the hip joint, which accounted for 14% from all the revisions. Six surgeries in the shoulder joint, which accounted for 10% from all the revisions, and 1.4 in the uh, from all the shoulder joint surgeries, and also uh, in the in the foot joint, uh, two surgeries which accounts for 3%. This slide 
shows the complication rate depending on the localization of process. You can see that the biggest complication rate is uh, can be observed in the knee joint and the proximal um, uh, tibial bone. So the majority of them uh, happen because of the aseptic instability or aseptic loosening which accounted for uh, 26 cases, uh, 54 percent of all the revision interventions. The revision surgeries, because of uh, infection complications, they uh, accounted for 16 cases, 33.3 percent. Now, uh, fracture of the prosthesis happened in 12.5 cases. Uh, Periprosthesis fractures, it happened in 6.25 percent of cases. And the, and the prosthesis revision because of the relapse of uh, the disease accounted for 12.5 percent as well. So all the cases of revisions are, were not related to infection. Uh, the, the ones that were not related to infection, uh, they uh, were uh, conducted one, as one-stage surgeries. The biggest problem we faced in the infection complications, which accounted for 4.7 percent from all the uh, total replacements. There were two-stage interventions. Uh, stage one after the uh, culture, we first of all detected sensitivity as well as the type of flora, and uh, all, then we uh, did two or three courses of antibacterial therapy, including uh, sensitive flora, and also we removed antiprosthesis, and uh, which where we introduced gentamicin or vancomycin, and the this um, construction of uh, the uh, joint also was coated with antibacterial sponges. We also uh, did uh, aseptics for the antiprosthesis bed, and after that, we provided two or three courses of antibacterial therapy. Stage two, after triple negative cultures of the uh, spacer bed, we uh, did reconstruction of endoprosthesis with the antibacterial therapy. After debridement of the knee, as well as the uh, endospacer, we. So, in this situation, we also. With the development of the 3D technology, we uh, received an opportunity to do uh, 3D uh, cemented spacers, which allows us to have better structure and also it uh, is a prevention of uh, fractures. The 3D spacer also allows uh, the patient to be mobilized and also to have good flexion in the joint. This slide shows stages of the 3D spacer introduction. Thus, revision antiprosthesis is uh, one of the biggest problem in orca orthopedics, and it uh, requires individual approach and professionalism from uh, the um, surgeon. Revision antiprosthesis or total replacement should be done only in the tertiary centers with big volume of patients and also with good equipment. The development of new technology allows us to broaden the opportunities of revision and the prosthesis and also to spare the limb. Thank you for your attention.